on the internet. Additionally, I've had the opportunity to review body-worn camera footage of the initial contacts with those involved, which have raised additional concerns as to what transpired during that incident. Having said that, as a police chief, I'm charged with enforcing the laws absent my personal feelings. I understand that you have questions about the decisions that were made regarding arrest during our initial response. As the police chief, I've had the benefit of reviewing videos as well as listening to 911 calls, reviewing interviews, speaking to detectives regarding the interviews they conducted, and reviewing body-worn camera footage from responding officers. As this is an ongoing investigation, there are certain elements I will not be able to discuss, and I must take into account the fact that minors are involved and must offer them additional protection. However, I will break down the incident for you in a moment. But before, I'd like to, uh, before I get into that, I'd like to introduce uh, Anaheim's Mayor, Tom Tate. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Anaheim takes this matter very seriously, as does everyone here today. I, like many in the community, have seen the video, and like many, I'm deeply disturbed and frankly angered by what it shows. The video shows an adult wrestling with a 13-year-old kid and ultimately firing a gun. I am so thankful that no one was seriously hurt. That should never have happened, not in one of our neighborhoods, not near one of our schools. Now, we as a city are left to figure all this out. Anaheim is committed to a full and impartial investigation. Our city will move forward without delay and conclude our investigation as soon as possible. I have every confidence that our Chief Casada and the Anaheim Police investigators working this case will uncover the facts and the truth about what happened. As in all cases like this, our findings will then be turned over to the District Attorney to determine how justice should be pursued. LAPD is taking its own course of action. Last night I spoke with Mayor Eric Garcetti and he assured me his city takes this matter very, very seriously and I thank him for his concern. I've received many questions asking why the kids were arrested and not the guy with the gun and I share that question and our community deserves answers to that question. We all must keep in mind that the officers, what the officers knew at the time of the incident and that they didn't have the benefit of the video we've all seen today. Once our part of this investigation is complete, we will take a look at how we handled the situation. If we, if we find that there are things we could have done better or procedures that need improvement, we will acknowledge that and we will own it. It will help us do better in the future. But as a city, I urge all to respect the process. For those who have expressed concerns and even outrage over what they saw, I understand how you feel. I commend you for speaking out and sharing your concerns with us. As a city, we stand by anyone who peacefully engages in Anaheim. We honor and protect everyone's constitutional right to express themselves. But violence has no place in our city and will not be tolerated. Destroying property and infringing on the rights of others, that is not Anaheim. Today, I ask for everyone's patience in avoiding any rush to judgment. I can assure you our investigation will be impartial and thorough, regardless who is involved in the situation. We must be mindful that the Constitution ensures equal treatment for all. If you have questions, if you have additional video or information that can help with this investigation, uh, or if you just want to share your concerns about the incident, please call 714-765-7990. That is how you can help. This has been a blow to our community. We had worked for years to foster kindness and trust amongst neighbors, and we've made great progress. What the world saw in that video does not reflect a community where neighbors help each other every day to build a stronger city. But we're not always perfect. But we have, but we have fostered a city of kindness and compassion that makes for a stronger Anaheim. It is that kindness and compassion that will help us through this Thank you all for being here today.
First, uh, as we get started, uh, I thank God that no one was uh, hurt. Um, so let me start by responding to several questions that I have received concerning my decisions, excuse me, our department's decisions to arrest two juveniles in the incident and not the off-duty Los Angeles police officer. Responding officers interviewed uh, everyone present at the scene, including the off-duty officer, his father, and 18 juveniles. All parties voluntarily came to the police department for follow-up interviews. The weapon was seized and the officer was processed, which included the taking of some clothing and forensic swabbing. There was a high consistency, excuse me, there was a high degree of consistency in the information we received from those interviewed. As a result, the juveniles were arrested. Now I want to break down the incident uh, for you piece by piece. It began around 2.40 on Tuesday, February 21st, and it involved an ongoing dispute between the off-duty officer and some juveniles who continually walk across his property. I personally wish he, the off-duty officer would have awaited uh, our arrival before taking action, but instead he decided to confront the juveniles. During the confrontation, it is alleged the 13-year-old boy made a threat against the officer that led the officer to believe that he was going to shoot him. At that point, the juvenile walked away and the officer made the decision to try and detain the juvenile pending our arrival. While physically detaining the juvenile, several houses away from where the initial incident began, several other juveniles became involved and a physical altercation ensued. At least two juveniles physically assaulted the officer, knocking him to the ground. Following the second battery, and as several people began to surround the officer, the officer removed a handgun from, from his uh, removed a handgun and one round was discharged. The statements obtained were consistent that the officer did not shoot at anyone but instead at the ground. Our officers short, uh, arrived shortly thereafter. Now let me address our decision making here. With regard to the juveniles, clear and compelling evidence existed supporting the 13 year olds involved in making criminal threats and engaging in battery and the 15 year olds involvement in an assault and battery and I ask that you recall that not all videos had been submitted or collected at the time of our initial investigation. Both juveniles were arrested and based on the charges the 13 year old was booked at Orange County Juvenile Hall and the 15 year old was released to his parents. With regard to the off-duty officer, while the evidence is clear and compelling that he did detain the juvenile and discharge his firearm, there was insufficient evidence at the time to prove the officer's actions rose to the level of a criminal act. Since the incident occurred, our detectives have worked around the clock collecting additional evidence, conducting additional interviews, and they have also been in communication with the Orange County District Attorney's Office. Based on the totality of the circumstances developed in their investigation, the decision was made to release the 13-year-old from Juvenile Hall pending further investigation. Criminal charges, however, could still be brought against any and all parties involved. Before I address uh, last night's protest, I want to acknowledge the work of my police department in their handling of this matter as well as their efforts last night and today to maintain order in our community. In terms of last night, we arrested 23 people, 18 adults, and five juveniles during a protest that drew between two and 300 people to the neighborhood where the incident occurred. As police chief, I fully support the public's ability to exercise its rights to assemble and protest. Those rights, however, do not include the destruction of property, the disruption of the quiet enjoyment of our neighborhoods, or any acts of violence. Finally, I want to talk about our commitment to provide the highest level of police service for all our residents and visitors to this community. With that in mind, I want to assure the public that we engage in a rigorous internal review process at Anaheim Police Department. We will thoroughly examine all aspects of our response and investigation into this matter. And if there are any opportunities for us to improve, we will take advantage of those. At this time, I'd like to introduce Assistant Los Angeles Police Department Chief Michael Moore. Chief, thank you, and thank you, Mayor Tate. On behalf of Chief Charlie Beck, I'm here to provide a framework of the Los Angeles Police Department's response since we learned of this event yesterday. Immediately upon learning of our off-duty officer's actions involving this, uh, this altercation and the use of his firearm, members of our force investigation uh, division, uh, detectives, responded 
to uh, Anaheim and began their investigation, a separate administrative investigation from the Anaheim Police Department's criminal investigation. Additionally, investigators from our Office of Inspector General responded to this location as well and, uh, and are conducting their own overview and oversight of the LAPD's administrative investigation. We have continued the investigation overnight and we continue uh, today and will in the days ahead continue to work with Anaheim police detectives as they conduct their criminal investigation, uh, gaining insight, information, and evidence as we complete our administrative investigation. Now for uh, matters of, of clarification and, and information to all parties as to what that means for LAPD. The Los Angeles Police Department has an investigative process when any, whenever an officer uses deadly force that is without peer as to its level of detail, its comprehensive manner of collection of evidence, its gathering of statements, and the assembly of that information is then brought for an internal tr uh, review by senior command staff, ultimately by the chief of police, in coming to a determination of whether or not the officer's actions were in or out of policy, whether or not they were consistent with our training and our, and our values and the uh, guidelines and expectations of our men and women. And those guidelines and expectations are clearly defined for their actions both on duty as well as off duty. Upon the chief's review, he will make a recommendation, a report, that will be forwarded to the Board of Police Commissioners. The Board of Police Commissioners is made up of five citizens committee members of Los Angeles appointed by the mayor, confirmed by our city council. And that board of five police commissioners as the head of the Los Angeles Police Department will take all aspects of our investigation, have, a, have access to all uh, information, all evidence, including the officer's compelled statements, and will make a uh, determination of whether or not the officer's actions, his use of force, both the use of his firearm as well as the other force that he engaged in, and yesterday's altercation were in or out of policy. Now this matter uh, is, uh, this process if you will, is not something that happens overnight. It, it does take time and we would ask for the public's uh, uh, patience as Chief Casada did and that is important in that we need to ensure that we gather as much information as there that exists and that we uh, evaluate it in, in a uh, systematic and, um, and appropriate manner. With that said, uh, I'm here also to convey a message on behalf of Chief Beck. Chief Beck has seen portions of the videos that have been uh, released uh, via YouTube and other sources, as I have. And we share in a concern, as has been expressed earlier, relative to the actions that were out there. And we also share in the appreciation that there was not anyone seriously injured or killed uh, yesterday. Uh, there is no more important investigation regarding the actions of a Los Angeles police officer than his or her decision to use deadly force. And I will I'm here to assure all members of the public, both here in Anaheim as well as in Los Angeles and others who have an interest from across this country, that this matter is the full attention of the Chief of Police, of the Board of Police Commissioners, and we will, in the days ahead, uh, gather and, and evaluate the evidence and come to a recommendation and that ultimately the Board of Police Commissioners, as they make their decision, that will all be uh, uh, made public and reports made available uh, for the public to review as, as to understanding the basis for that, uh, that ultimate decision. In closing, again, let me uh, express my s sincere appreciation for the uh, partnership, the uh, ability to work with Anaheim Police Detectives uh, with this department as it has begun its criminal investigation. Uh, they, uh, they have been, these men and women have been true professionals in joining and supporting our investigative needs as we've conducted our parallel investigation and, uh, and that will conclude my remarks at this time. Thank you. Thanks Chief. At this time I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Michael Matsuda, Superintendent of the Anaheim Union High School District. Mr. Matsuda. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Mike Matsuda. I'm the Superintendent of the Anaheim Union High School District. We are a district of, comprised of uh, about 30,000 students, grades 7 through 12, 
We cover five cities. We have over 4,200 McKinney Vento uh, students. Those are homeless students who attend our schools. And um, I'd like to uh, reiterate uh, from our board of trustees that uh, our, our top priority is to assure the safety and security, both physical and emotional, of all of, all of our students. In fact, I visited our affected school sites this morning and I talked to the students and staff about how they are feeling. Uh, uh, many of them are shaken by uh, the events of the recent few days, but they do feel safe. Uh, both emotionally and physically at our schools. And I think uh, that, um, I, so I would like to commend our staff and our city too for, uh, as I spoke with the mayor uh, yesterday, this is truly gonna be a test of our relational capital, our test of our kindness and compassion. And it's whether we truly believe and wanna walk the talk because now is the time where it's going to come down, where we can bring, we can truly bring a vision of one Anaheim together in our schools, in our communities. Um, I am uh, confident <clears throat> that we are going to be able to go forward from this in a much stronger position. And I would like to um, thank uh, the city uh, as well as all of our business partners, our nonprofits, and our Anaheim Police Department for helping to build this concept of One Anaheim. This is not easy work, as you guys know. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, forces outside in terms of a national narrative that are trying to divide our communities. And um, my assurance to our folks and our kids is that we will remain united and strong as we go forward. I would like to note, too, that um, we work very closely with the Orange County Human Relations and other nonprofits, uh, to bring, and we have, uh, through our own funding, brought in social workers and counselors uh, that are, uh, provide ongoing social-emotional support, anti-bullying support, and um, I just came from uh, a conference at the Disneyland Hotel where I spoke on a panel for civic engagement. I think this uh, uh, civic engagement, civic uh, education for our kids more important than ever because um, they are um, young adults who are going to be adults and I think they need to have skills so that they can navigate through these tough decisions or, or tough uh, uh, all the stuff that's coming out of the internet. We had some some students speak on that panel and they spoke about uh, there's so many emotional things coming down. In fact this this incident was uh, uh, referenced. Everybody was talking about it throughout the state of California as well as the country. So um, I do want to underscore the importance of continued uh, civic education, democracy education, because this is what this is an exercise in as this unfolds. Um, I would like to um, also uh, emphasize that we are planning with uh, our partners, including the city and, and law enforcement, on some sort of community healing event um, going forward. I mean, I'm not one to believe in one-shot uh, fixes. Uh, this is an ongoing relational building with community. It's very important that our future uh, adults and our young adults believe in, uh, in uh, a greater America, a greater Anaheim, uh, both in, with law enforcement, with our business, and with our schools and all of our institutions. Um, as everybody knows here, I think that's what's at risk, not just here, but nationally. But I want to reiterate our commitment to our partnership with the city of Anaheim to build a city of kindness and compassion as we move forward. Thank you very much. Okay, I'd also like to introduce uh, here on the stage, Mr. Marquez Equilibria. He's a community, community relations service officer for the United States Department of Justice. He will not be speaking, but he is here with us. Uh, at this time, we're gonna introduce Mr. Rusty Kennedy, executive director of the Orange County Human Relations Commission. Hi, I'm Rusty Kennedy. I'm uh, CEO of OC Human Relations. We believe all people have a right to live free from discrimination and violence based on race and religion, ethnicity, and other aspects of their being. We partner with the, Orange, with the uh, Anaheim Police Department and the Anaheim Union High School District um, on many levels, including dealing with uh, police community reconciliation, uh, police community dialogues, and at the school in developing a positive climate um, we're at the, uh, today, uh, at the request of the superintendent, we joined in with our staff in meeting with the youngsters at Ball Junior High and talking with them, helping them to process this. There's a lot of fear in the community, as you've heard alluded to, and the context for that makes everything um, more, uh, more ticklish and dangerous. 
So um, we're, uh, we're here to, you know, we, we have confidence in the process as you've heard it outlined. Um, and we're gonna continue our prime focus, the safety um, of the children and families in that community. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, participating. We will just uh, be able to take just a few questions. Again, I want to uh, remind everyone that this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, it is very, uh, we're limited as to what we can say, again, uh, being respective of the minors who are involved in their, in their right to privacy, um, as well as other personnel matters as well. So I will take just a few questions and then I will hand it over to uh, Sergeant Wyatt. Ms. Vargas. That's correct. I was actually working the day of the event. I actually would have got a call from my deputy chief who uh, informed me of the incident. I do have access to all body-worn camera footage via the website. I can access it from my home if I'm across state, uh, so I have access to that. But I meant who called the 911 call. Oh, excuse me, the 911 call. I'll ask uh, Darren to. Uh, the call came from the residence where the incident initiated. Uh, it was either the off-duty LAPD officer or his father that placed the initial call. While we were responding, a second call was received, uh, and shortly after the incident occurred was when we arrived. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us a little bit about this officer, please? And you've also discussed recommendations that will come either from Chief Beck or the Police Commission. What are the options? So it starts with, with no discipline, I would assume, on up to what? And what can you tell us about this officer? So I'm precluded by state law from uh, sharing any information relative to the personnel record of the involved officer. Uh, as to how his actions will be evaluated, the department, any, anytime an officer uses force, a reportable use of force, uses that, looks at the tactics that the officer engages in, whether or not the officer drew and exhibited a firearm, and then also the, the actual use of force itself. In this instance, this will be evaluated as follows. So as an off-duty officer, his decision to initiate action, uh, whether that decision was appropriate given the facts and circumstances known to him at the time, the reasonableness of that decision, and then the tactics that he engaged in uh, in deciding to, to, uh, uh, to apparently uh, take custody of this individual or, or, or detain this, uh, this subject. Those tactics will involve his decision-making process, his communications, his efforts to de-escalate, his efforts to use other resources available to him. There will also be dis uh, a determination in or out of policy that will ultimately be made by the Board of Police Commissioners as to whether or not his drawing and exhibiting of a firearm was in or out of policy. The department has a policy relative to the displaying or drawing and exhibiting of a firearm, uh, recognizing that the danger is in inherently involved and that the drawing and exhibiting of a firearm can in, in some efforts or in some instances escalate a situation rather than uh, be helpful or, or, or contribute to a resolution. Lastly, the department will look at and the Board of Police Commissioners will make a in or out of policy determination on whether or not the officer's use of force, and in this instance including deadly force, was in or out of policy. The department's use of force policy, which is available online, LAPD online, you can look and see what our use of force policy is. Our use of force policy is an administrative policy. It is not a policy that's defined uh, entirely by state or federal law. It is based on an objective reasonableness standard, uh, a standard you'll often hear uh, referred to in, police, in policing circles, uh, and, and to a court case called Graham v. Connor, where it looks at the actions of an officer being, uh, being judged on a series of factors as to their reasonableness. And again, factors such as alternatives, other resources, uh, the, the, the peril or the dangers the officer faced, the facts and circumstances known to the officer at the time he or she makes that, uh, that important decision, that critical decision to use force, and in this instance, to use deadly force. So it is a, uh, a process that uh, the, the, the investigation at a forensic level is needed to shine as much light as possible on that critical analysis of the points I've just mentioned. The chief of police will ultimately evaluate that entire investigation and make a, a written report to the Board of Police Commissioners uh, that will 
uh, articulate his findings, his recommendations, and on the basis the basis for that rec those recommendations, that will be forwarded to the Board of Police Commissioners. They will then take the matter upon themselves. They'll do the same evaluative process, and then they'll come to a public decision as to in or out of policy for the use of force, in or out of policy for the drawing and exhibiting of a firearm, and whether they approve or administratively disapprove of, of the tactics used. Lastly, the Office of the Inspector General which is a separate uh, office that works directly for the Board of Police Commissioners. They, they, are not, uh, they are not within the LAPD chief chain of command. They're, they are, their direct boss is the, is the Board of Police Commissioners. They conduct a similar, uh, they'll conduct an overview of our force investigation division. They'll have access to all evidence, all information, including the Anaheim Police Department's investigation and their reports. And they will make a separate evaluation of the chief's evaluation. And that separate evaluation will be given to the Board of Police Commissioners for them to take into consideration and evaluate when they make their ultimate decision. Ultimately, though, for the public, this is a long process, but it's one that is meant to uh, ensure uh, complete and a thorough understanding of the facts and circumstances, come to a reasoned and articulated basis for a decision of whether this was an in or out of policy matter. That decision, by the way, is separate and apart form the criminal evaluation of the officer's actions by the Orange County District Attorney and by and that's char the charge of the Anaheim Police Department to investigate. So I want to be clear, the administrative review of the department is separate and apart from what the Anaheim Police Department is now charged with and what they'll present to the uh, Orange County District Attorney's Office for their determination of whether, uh, whether and what type of prosecution of any individuals <coughs> are involved in this. And when is allowed to work? Yeah, so one last point, if I might, uh, that was a point that I, I unfortunately left off in my earlier remarks. The officer involved in this is currently not working the field and is on administrative leave. That, that is a decision by the chief of police, given the facts and circumstances as he knows this today. But I must also stress that any time an officer uses deadly force, uh, use of a firearm in the Los Angeles Police Department, they are immediately removed from the field and do not return to the field until the determination by the Chief of Police that uh, that, that is an appropriate decision. And, and at this point today, as I stand here, and uh, this officer is on administrative leave. How Thank you. Yeah, again, I'll, I'll say it again. I am precluded from giving any information relative to this officer's background. Exactly. This is a, this is a, the state law uh, provides for uh, confidentiality of personnel records of, of all police officers, their actions on and off duty. And so in this instance, I'm precluded by making any type of uh, description of this officer's uh, background. Thank you. Can I say, uh, Chief Kazada is going to take one more question or make a statement, and then we're going to conclude the uh, news conference. Was that the I'm going to close by saying we are uh, close, very close to completing our investigation. It is our goal to present our case to the district attorney within two weeks. Uh, and it, as I mentioned earlier during my comments, it's, to, it's the Orange County the district attorneys, uh, it's their purview to decide what, if any, charges will be filed. And again, that will be done within two weeks. Again, I thank you for your time coming out. And uh, Sergeant Wyatt will remain in the area for additional questions. Thank you very much. No, the press conference is concluded. I will remain and I will try and answer some questions. Understand that we're limited into the information that we can release, but I'll make myself available to all of you in just a sec. Okay, give me just a sec, guys. Do you mind sticking around? Do you have anyone available? I do. Can you get the back of the room, so give me a few minutes and then we'll just brief him. We, uh, for those for Spanish-speaking media, Sergeant Luis Correa is here. He will address you shortly. Uh, we need to get some stuff taken care of real quick and uh, brief him on. Do we know if there's any previous contacts with this officer? Hey guys, can you have a uh, we do have previous reports of similar incidents, uh, but not in... All right, and for those of you who haven't seen the video, we do have a little bit of that video that was shown on our morning show this morning. I do want to go ahead and play that for you now, the video in question. Okay. 